Hello and welcome. Um, I'm here with Kyla Tilly. And uh, Kyla is uh, one musician who I know over Twitter. And I think music Twitter is like the biggest place, um, at least at least for me in terms of promotion and, and actually meeting a lot of musicians. Um, and uh, Kyla has a new single out, uh, Bloom and Grow. Uh, and why don't we talk about that a little bit to start off with? Um, sure. You go sure. for it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's uh, a song I wrote. Uh, I wrote the song right at the beginning of the pandemic, and I kind of credit it. Uh, so I live in Newfoundland right now, uh, but I had spent 13 years on the mainland in Montreal, okay. and I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life there. I was very, very happy in Montreal. And uh, that in a minute. The pandemic came along and I couldn't go to my studio and uh, all my gigs were canceled. My tour was canceled. And I uh, I joined this little kind of like someone, I, a songwriter in Nashville, Sarah Spencer, had this little online thing. It was just like, let's meet once a week and we'll just hang out and write songs. We won't talk to each other. We'll just do our own thing, but together. Mm -hmm. And she gave a couple prompts. And uh, anyway, I started writing this song and um, I credit it with coming back to Newfoundland for two reasons. One is like, it's all about kind of making the next step and taking, taking big steps and being, you know, unafraid of change and unafraid of consequences, I guess, yeah. negative consequences. Um, but it also really annoyed my neighbors because I couldn't go play my guitar at my studio because it was closed because of the pandemic. So I was like, trying to write these lyrics and playing this seven, eight riff like over and over again. And um, so between, between me kind of feeling really trapped and then writing these lyrics about being the opposite of trapped and then my angry neighbors, uh, it was just like, okay, we, we've <laughs> got to go back to Newfoundland. So uh, it kind of became this real, like I wrote this song, but then it became also this whole life thing that led to a change in my life. That was yeah. Yeah. And, and so you moved to rural, rural. New yeah. Hampshire, yeah. Right? So we're, we're like an hour outside of St. John's, but we are in the woods. Like we, there are no neighbors to be angry. There's there, you know, we can yeah. see neighbors, but they're, they're yeah. far enough away and we're covered in trees. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm surprised with your music that it would have bothered the neighbors so much because I mean, it's acoustic. I mean, you play very, you've got an interesting picking, I don't know, picking or plucking yeah. style. Yeah. You're yeah. very, very, I wouldn't say like I'd say it's aggressive, but yeah. in a good way. It's like it's yeah. very you know you really hear the string, you can feel the strings. Yeah. Oh, um, good. But, good. I like but I mean, if you'd been like a Swedish death metal band or something, I would have understood. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I also play in a death metal band. Hey, oh, but, do you? but oh, we 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 um and actually. So I would practice death metal in my apartment from time to time on my electric, like not plugged in. Right. Um, or else yeah. plugged in with headphones, but definitely not through an amp. But um, I think the neighbor could hear me. Like, I think the strings were loud enough in some parts. I, I don't know if that apartment just had really terrible wow. sound. It, it, it sounds as if it had no, in, like, no insulation yeah. whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> no, no neighbors before had ever complained. Um, mm. Mostly I did my music at my studio, though. So it was... Right. I didn't yeah. do much in the house. And when I did, it would be like daytime and people were at work. But I think there's also like, we were all trapped in our apartments, Yeah, you know? So my neighbors were also stuck in their little tiny one bedroom, very hot. It was summer in Montreal. You know, we're looking yeah. at 40 degrees outside. And, so it was and just, what, what part of town were you in? I was in Park Excellent, oh. Park Extension, uh, which yeah. I loved living there. Um, yeah, yeah so. I, I, I lived for a, a number of years in Mile End. Yeah, like almost your neighbor, just yeah, off of Bernard Street and Saint Viator. Uh, and yeah, I was I grew up in Montreal, so I was all over the place in the city. Nice, it's nice. a fun town. I mean, I I moved out of it because I just got I don't know. It, it's always the way, right? Yeah, you get you know, tired wherever you are too long. You want to move somewhere else, and yeah. I ended up going to to Toronto. But there's it's a great place to go and visit, and it's well worth it for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, so you. You've released the single, so where is it available? Just so people know, it's it's available pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's yeah. on my Bandcamp page, okay. KylaTillyBandcamp.com. Yeah. Um, but if you use any streaming service, it should be there. Yeah. Um, 
and you're not under a pseudonym or anything. It's all just no, no. It's Kyla Tilly. Yeah. Okay, good. You're 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 like me. You're actually it's your name. Yeah, it's my name. <laughs> you know? It's my name. And if you type Kyla Tilly, you should get all sorts of things that are okay. Good. No, it's it, it, it's good. And uh, you also, when we were talking before, you've got an upcoming album as well. Yes. And, yes. And if I I'm do. correct, that'll be the second your second album. Is that correct? Yes, it's my second full length yeah. album. Yeah. Um, I've put out a couple EPs, but for full length albums, it'll be the second. Okay. And uh, it will also be titled Bloom and Grow. That's really the central. Main. It's the central theme. It's the theme of yeah. the whole album. So everything works around. No, that. very good. And and I noticed as well. I mean, one of the things that I find most for me uh, fun about doing doing the show is it's actually forcing me to listen to other people's music. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I mean, I don't think unless you're a musician, you understand, you know, but but for me, it's been since I've started, you get so involved in your own music. Mm -hmm. And I, I spend hours and hours listening to things like I'll set up playlists or when you're doing an album, you're trying to figure out, well, what's the order of the songs? And it becomes really, yep. you know, the thing oh, you're, yeah. you, know, you, you, oh, yeah. you get about. <laughs> So, you know, you've got 27 different versions that you've done and, you know, you make a change and, well, what does that sound like? Is it going to affect things? Um, so with the, with the album, though, I noticed when I was, when I was listening to your, your stuff that you, you tend to do work alone. So just you and the acoustic guitar. And then I also heard some accompaniment. Well, now, was it just a drummer that you're working with? Or do you, you play with, with a lot of other musicians? Um, I, it's mostly... So my husband plays drums. Okay. And, uh, and I he's figured that might be the case. Yeah. So, he's, yeah you, he's, you married the drummer. Very smart move. I, I married... He also plays bass. He doesn't play bass oh, for me. Oh, man. He doesn't play bass for me. But when people, like, you know, they ask, yeah. like, why did you marry your husband? I say, well, he plays bass and drums. That's a real <laughs> catch. <laughs> and he's very good at mixing and mastering and graphic design. And Excellent. he's a pretty good photographer. <laughs> very, very Which good. Which is why if you, if in my last album, like the last, the last line of the thank yous is something like, you know, proffering great gratitude to my husband for absolutely everything. Cause he does so much of the, all I do is write the songs and sing them. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I play, I play bass I play guitar and then I usually play bass um, right. for my own stuff and I sing. I usually will get like on new shoes. I had, um, I have a few friends uh, come by and, and do a backup vocal. I have a, a friend who's a fiddle player that I played in a duet with for a right. long time and he plays fiddle on, on a few songs. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I always try to keep um, like on the new album, there will be a couple songs that are just, just vocals and guitar and nothing else. And then there's some that are full band, um, which is still mostly me. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, guitar, bass, drums, lead guitar, backing vocals, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a, a mix. But I've got um, like Orange G is playing harmonica on one of the songs. I met oh, him fun. on Twitter uh, and some other friends like my friend Sahara Jane, who sang backup. She came through Montreal while I was recording New Shoes and I grabbed her and I was like, OK, you have to sing backups on these songs. And she did. And I was listening to the album, like I'd had it, you know, mostly recorded and I was listening and one of the songs on it, I was like, Sahara needs to sing back, back up. And uh, I contacted her and, and she sang back up and um, her partner, Ken Shorley plays uh, flower pot percussion on it. Oh, fun. So I'm, I'm really excited about that one. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah, we've, I've got a couple friends, but it's still mostly, uh, you know, yeah, me and my studio. A solo, a solo effort. Mm-hmm. But no, that, that that's fun too because it, it just made me think. I don't know. Did did you see the uh, that recent Beatles documentary that they did? I haven't seen you it. You should yet. really check. You should really check it out uh, because it, it just is like a, almost like a drama because it's the way it plays out. Right. And the most incredible thing with it because they were recording. I guess uh, I think it's uh, Let It Be. Right. They were doing the recordings for Let It Be. And the whole thing was falling apart. And like during the early parts, I think like George leaves the band at some point. <laughs> There's like great deals of tension. They're fight, you know, there's like yeah. no chemistry at all. And then just by sheer chance, Billy Preston is in town. And, you know, as as happens with musicians, he knew them. They played together somewhere years ago or whatever. I think no, in, in they were they were both playing in Hamburg. <laughs> 
That's how far back they go, right? Right. And so he just dropped into the studio and he played on most of the album, yeah. <laughs> right? And the moment he started playing, he became the sort of glue that kept the whole kept thing the rest together. Of them it was together. really, it was, it was sensational to see. And, and it's funny because it just made me that your, your story made me think of that because it was similar in the sense that, oh, the song just isn't working or whatever. And then, yeah. you know, it's There's that extra, the, you know, that extra little ingredient that's missing. Yeah. So that's really, that's really wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and, and say with like Orange G, I was, I think I was singing along with one of his songs and okay. I was like, oh my God, our, our voices, like we've got to sing together. <laughs> <laughs> and then I immediately knew like, oh, this is the song he's he's got to be on so. oh no that that's fun I'll, I'll have to ask him i'm i've i've booked him and he'll be coming on and doing oh, really? at some point in the next few weeks just something like that i can't remember the date we set but we've been you know cool been backstage just like uh but but it, it's great i i've had such good it's such a good reaction uh and and john who was the first episode that's going to be be airing tomorrow because i'm these are being recorded of course right um he gave me a whole list of people who I should reach out to. And before that, I mean, I already had five or six people from when I just, you know, mentioned yeah, yeah. some sure of the groups knows. that were, were part of. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, mm -hmm. and the other funny thing, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sort of catch you on stage when I was listening to your stuff and especially your guitar style, it's mm -hmm. I've got one song on my record and I was thinking, man, I'd like the guitar to sound like that. So it's just so funny how that goes. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it because it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a sort of thing that uh, I don't really I don't play any instruments. Right. I'm oh, okay. completely self-taught and I've got these two weird ways I, I work. Uh, and, and so, you know, the one musician who I'll re regularly bring in is sort of a lead player. You know, right. whether it's for a solo or or guitarist, and I'm actually working with with another uh, another sort of member of the crew uh, on my on my album. But I, I anyway, we, we we can talk. With this yeah. is probably going to be yeah. a not of not a, not of a lot of interest to other people. Um, so so let's go way way back now and tell me how did you get interested in music? What what was the first what, what's your first musical recollection? Oh God, my first musical recollection, um, probably listening to uh, like the Gain Ballet uh, on record. I remember, like, I like there's photographs of two year old Kyla um, with like my my similarly aged cousin behind me, and I'm like going for the record player, and like she's like <laughs> on the lookout, and there's like this photo of me like. Uh oh, you're like you caught me. Oh, so funny. But uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time listening listening to records. My parents, um, my dad sang opera, uh, like not professionally, but he was in a he was in a theater troupe and always played right. music. I'm also like it's kind of hard not to be involved in music in Newfoundland. It's like everybody plays an instrument, and if there's a party, there's people singing and playing guitar. We always had a piano in the house, so it was really like there was always music, and I was always listening to it. Uh, I really got started playing. Like, I don't even remember asking to learn to play an instrument or anything like that. But just like when I was 11, um, my older brother had taught himself to play classical guitar. And right. I think my parents were just like, they were just like, okay, we'll pay him and he can teach Kyla. And like, it was just like one day they were just like, okay, like this is what we're doing now. And like that we already had guitars around. So like, yeah. it wasn't like I got a guitar. It was like, here's the three quarter classical guitar that's in the house um, that has been in the family for 50 years or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was just like, here, kid, lessons. Well, um, listen, and, and in terms of chops, they couldn't have chosen better, right? Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. You know. And I loved it. Like, I just immediately was like, okay, this is what I do now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> so that was that yeah. was that really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you listen, you're probably old enough. What was the first record you bought? Um, so it was probably an Aerosmith tape, uh, not a record. Oh, okay. I was still buying. I was cassette. Yeah, well, tape, tape is basically it's same gener. It's but, the same era. Yeah, I mean, I could still have bought records. We had a record player. That's that's what yeah. we listened to. Um, so I really got into Aerosmith and I would have been like, um, I would have been like eight or nine. And mm -hmm. so we had a Woolworths, uh, like a big department store. And I used to go downtown 
um, I used to walk downtown by myself and like my neighborhood friends who were like six and seven were allowed to go downtown if Kylo yeah. was taking them because, you know, Kylo was yeah. eight or whatever. Uh, so I'd go down there and like I'd save my allowance and spend it on like Barbies and Aerosmith tapes. Um, okay. And I was, a, I was a huge Aerosmith fan. So like Toys in the Attic and Rocks. And Rocks, yeah. And that, that, that uh, loved Rocks. And well, Rocks um, was, Rocks was the, you know, back in the saddle, the beginning yeah, of that song. Is yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's amazing it isn't more well known it's it's true yeah. and it's it's so funny because i like i remember when uh the one with janie's got a gun pump pump came out and i was yeah. like i'm done with eros <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't remember how old i was like 10 or yeah. 11 or something. well i mean you sound you sound like me with genesis because <laughs> i was a massive genesis fan and then you know and then peter gabriel left and well that was, was like, kind of the well, end of it yeah you know yeah, uh, so. but yeah, they, they 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 get commercial, they get successful, you know. Yeah, exactly. And it was and, just like, and, and sort of looking back now, it's so I totally understand it, and it's like respect to be, to be yeah. truthful. And it's interesting, like with Genesis, they both did it. Yeah, and they were both very more successful separately. Separated yeah, together. so it's like you know what? Yeah, totally fine. Yeah, it's um, true. Yeah, so Aerosmith. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and know, then when I was 12, I got into Swedish death metal because I'd been playing classical guitar and like I'd been listening to, you know, like I love Jethro Tull. Yeah. I, I, I love Jethro Tull. OK. Yeah. And uh, like Steel Eye Span, like a lot of uh, Celtic okay. folk so rock. That was, but that's more on the folky end of that's rock. the folk. That's yeah. the folk stuff. And then like I was yeah. listening to a lot of like I, like Russian ballet, like this kind of like like heavier classical music. And so right. it was just like. Mm -hmm. You know, and my older brothers were into like my oldest brother loved Deep Purple and my other brother loved Judas Priest. So it was right. like the, all this like heavier stuff. So like when Kylo was 12, um, it was, you know, it was that weird. There was a very strange little period in which death metal was on much music and I guess MTV in the States. And yeah. it was like yeah. it was really big for like a year. Um, but, but it was the year that I was like starting to be like okay i'm really looking for my own music now and uh yeah so i got i got i was yeah. i mean i well, still I, I it, so, it sort of makes sense too because i i know i've you know it was never really my musical style but one of the youtubers i follow has this great series of like all this metal stuff and i watch it because they're just they're fun yeah you know and i i'm always like i love music history yeah, or like, or, or exactly. like any any of those shows where they're going through and it's in the studio. And yeah, talking about how they yeah. made the, this it record. It doesn't matter I, I what watch, kind I of music they're single, making. It's care, interesting. Right? <laughs> uh, and and with the death metal, it sort of makes sense sense because a lot of the guitarists were very. It's very classical music. Mm -hmm. You know, like the riffing is all very based on on real sort of classical music yep. as opposed to blues. Yeah, absolutely. So that that I, I that makes sense to me yeah. that that would be something. And and I try to I tell people that all the time because people are like, "What do yeah. you mean?" And, and I was like, "It's like it's classical music. Like <laughs> there's just it was the most yeah. obvious place for me to go." Yeah. And, and what, what's that famous? There's one really really famous uh, guitarist. He's like one of like the pantheon of great. Oh, like are you like, thinking like something or someone? Yeah. What what's that? Are you thinking Ingve Malmsteen or Ingve yeah Ingve Malmsteen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. with his various incarnations. That, that's what made me think of it. I, I because I the the guy who does the videos, his name is Razor Fist. Okay. And you should really check them out. There, he's got a whole series. He's a he's a big sort of metal fan. Right. And uh, you know, does does it through and through the, and then he'll go through the whole discography of the band. Nice. So oh, he's got really one cool. like like in in terms of metal, I'm I'm really like it's or stuff for me or nothing. It's like Black Sabbath. The first two Black Sabbath right. records are just like yeah, they're they're great. They, they just inventing style. It's it's like well, it's like it's like Motorhead. It's like every song they invent a different subgenre of metal. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? And it's like okay. Yeah. Uh, and and they, he does he did like a doc. The thing's got to be about three hours long, and he goes through every single record in the whole discography for for like Black Sabbath, and it's fascinating oh, cool. to see. Yeah, yeah. no, no. You, if you're into it, you'll you'd love it. Yeah, you know? I'll check that out. I'll check that it's, out. Well, it's for well sure. worth uh, well worth watching. Um, let me just think. Uh, so, are you you able to tour at all yet? 
No, no, I'm I'm not feeling comfortable at all um, with the touring situation. Yeah, and I'm kind of like it was like you know it was like well last year it was like well maybe I'll do a tour in 2022 and now I'm like hmm, maybe yeah. I'll tour in 2023. Uh, maybe yeah. I'll maybe I'll you know I'm kind of looking at can we do some outdoor shows in the summer? I think I'd be okay with that. I played three shows last year in person and I was really like you know, I, things kind of, I could drive to, uh, in a day and, yeah. uh, you know, with kind of like space between them. So I wasn't going from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's gotten a lot riskier uh, mm -hmm. and it's not just, it's not just sort of the health thing that I think is less of an issue, but it's like cancellations because of some weird stuff. Traveling is a lot more complicated. Traveling is very complicated. And I am doing like, I'm going to a conference in May. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a, I'm still like, am I really going? <laughs> like I've got my tickets. I guess I'm really going. But yeah, um, well, at some point you got to lead life. Yeah, you got it. You got to kind of like the, with the same kind of thinking, you'd never get into a car again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because statistically, it's more dangerous. <laughs> it's right? true, but it's not going to stop you from it's, driving. It's funny now. I'm like, man, I I would have felt safer touring last fall than like I do right now. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, things, but um. I mean, I didn't feel safe last fall. That's like an, an in retrospect thing. It's like, oh, maybe I should have done this last summer. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you only, you only you get go. the one chance. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of places actually do bounce back, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I know one of my favorite venues in Montreal uh, has closed, and yeah. it's like I, 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 you know, I spent a day mourning. I think when I, yeah. when I heard it, like I've, and I've kind of been like. Oh, is the Avant Garde Cafe in Ottawa still going? Like, is, <laughs> is this place still going? Or, yeah. Well, um, it must have been hard. I mean, for them, they 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 basically haven't been able to be in business for two yeah. years. For, yeah. You know, and, and then even then, it was with restrictions and half crowds and lots of people who wouldn't show up. And you know, mm -hmm. no, it's like I was going to go finally to see, I guess, the first concert since all of this started, and you know get to my friend's place we were meeting to to do have a couple of pre-drinks and uh they just received texts that the show got canceled right so, yeah and that's, oh, it's just like that's, another, oh, that's like, great it's so much work to put a tour together and like yeah. and that's what happened at the beginning i had put a tour together that's what i'd done that's what i'd spent my winter doing and it was supposed to kick off like march 21st or something of 2020 oh and it was just like i kind of was like all that work like yeah, i don't want to do it again ever like yeah exactly so it's really it's really a like I, it's been hard for me to you know have the will to to put that effort in for something that might just well might well be canceled again yeah. so there's the safety i'm i am very paranoid about the safety issue as well but um yeah all sorts of factors. So we're 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 virtual for another another little while yet. Yeah, and and have you found any any op opportunities to be playing like virtually or anything? Yeah, I, I've been setting up. Um, and I'll I'm about to. There's another thing I'm about to announce. Okay. Uh, a series of concerts through Side Door Access, which I'd used before uh, right. to book house shows, and mm -hmm. they immediately like as soon as as soon as. Uh, the pandemic began they very quickly turned into an online um virtual concert so i'll be doing that and i stream regularly on twitch um I'm okay a, okay and, and how's how's that going it's all right it's i'm sort of treating it more like my office hours so i write songs um and okay. then i had written so many songs that i had to start doing uh some like performance streams uh to get through the song so 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 it's good and it's fun and and again it's it's another like really lovely musical community so i've i've okay. met all sorts of people no no i'm gonna have to check it out I, I didn't know that there was anything musically happening on twitch oh yeah oh no music music twitch is is really is really nice actually okay I, I think. and 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 well j just describe for me because I'm, I'm a bit fascinated what like how do you present it you know as a so, I mean, is it, is it low cut and push up bras, or like, like, <laughs> like, like the gamers, or you know? No, I, I'm pretty much like as as I am. <laughs> I mean, well, I you, you never know, right? I mean, you know? I, there's definitely, there's definitely, there's definitely uh, all levels of of uh, of 
of various ways to attract attract viewers. Um, no, I just kind of sit here in my in my space and I share my screen when I'm writing yeah. songs. Yeah, uh, and I have people chatting. You know, people chat with me, and and uh, I keep a score of uh, who. Um, I'm really easy to distract. It's really easy to distract Kyla. We went and had a really long conversation about heavy metal. It's really easy to get Kyla just talking about metal. Uh, there's a lot of things it's easy to get Kyla talking about. So I have this thing where it's like Kyla versus the chat and I keep track. Like, so if I, if I manage to write a verse or yeah. like come up with a riff, it's like Kyla gets a point. And, uh, if chat manages to get me like on some tangent about, this, that, or the other thing, then then chat gets a point. So that's yeah. that's one of the things. No, and, I'm gonna I'm going have to check that out because yeah. I, I was thinking about trying to figure out a way of of, of doing the same kind of thing. because yeah. I, I don't really I don't I don't I only produce music through my my DAW. Through oh my, yeah. My, oh, people do that. People people watch that. People would watch that. You yeah. telling them how you're doing it, and uh, I record now sometimes. I because yeah. I because yeah. I wrote all these songs. What am I going to do with all these songs? So I yeah. started like just I just have my DAW up and I. Yeah. You know. No. Well, it, it's it's really good too because it it must build an audience that that's actually then committed and interested in the final product yeah. once you actually release it, right? Yeah, you definitely. Know, they've got something and they've 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 invested time. Yeah. In, yeah. You know, and and they've, they've seen like, the development, and sometimes it's it's crazy. You know, I don't know about you, but some songs I'll fiddle with for months on end, <laughs> and other things it's like you're you're not in control. Yeah, and it just comes. It it's you know you're the vessel of of whatever it is, and it, it's, it's like it's through you, and it's like and you think afterwards, what was that, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, no, for that, sure. That, that's that's really fun. Uh, that, that's well worth. worth I, I did not know. It's amazing how many different you know what I mean venues there are, and mm -hmm. you know, but I mean that's also one of the reasons why I I, I started doing this is there's so little on YouTube. And there really should be much more. Mm -hmm. uh, although with YouTube, the problem I've found, and I'm going to have to start experimenting around a little bit, is just they're so crazy around copyright for music. It's nuts. Right. You well, Twitch, Twitch is too, uh, which doesn't doesn't hurt me because I'm all do, I'm doing all originals. Um, yeah. Although, of course, on YouTube, I'm always getting the, like, you, you put this copyrighted thing. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I copyright. Or you get a copyright <laughs> claim on your own stuff and it isn't you. Or, well, it might yeah, be. It's, I mean, it's going, it's going right? back to me, right? So I don't yeah. worry about it. But it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, but, but, it, well, but the thing is, but the thing is, it might lead to bigger problems and strikes mm -hmm. and, and issues. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Because I had also thought, do you, did you ever see there's this... Um, there's this feature, I can't think of the, I'm just trying to think of the the name of the service. Anyway, it's a website and uh, it's all for, for sort of indie music and they have this hot or not section. Oh, okay. What's it called? Um, it's sound, I can't think of, there's just so many of these things. Uh, but in any case, I'll, I'll put it down in the, the description. Right. I'll, I'll research it. And I thought it would be really fun because what you do is you you review other people's songs and you get points so that you can have your songs reviewed. Okay. Right. Without having to right. pay. Otherwise, you, you pay a fee to get it done. Like there's a right. super version okay. and a cheap version. And I'm always all about the cheap version <laughs> you know, sort of thing. And I always thought it would be so much fun to get like two or three people together. And basically do like one of those, you know, American Idol type. Thing oh, where, yeah. But just have fun with it and, and really say, you know, because some songs, you know, you'll listen to them and there's some great stuff. And there's others that is just so derivative that like the musician should be told, you know, like I yes. would have liked to have had that kind of input. Yeah. By, by you know, by someone, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like who would say and take it seriously enough, uh, you know, and do it with love and not, you know, like, like yeah. actual constructive criticism. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it, I think it might be very useful and probably pretty entertaining to watch. And I actually I contacted the guy who runs the the website and he had no problem with it. But it's like the question then becomes music on YouTube, right? Yeah. And music on the internet because there's just so many of these trolly companies out there. Yeah. Uh, that are doing copyright strikes on things, and it's half the time it's on things that you know are are copyright free. 
because right. <laughs> I've got a, a couple of channels and do videos and I'll, I'll take stuff. And then you get a claim on it. And it's like, what are you supposed to do then? Yeah. You know, you can either blank it out. So there's a minute and a half in your recording or whatever. That's, that's no crazy. audio. Well, that's that's really something that's really good. And no one's <laughs> going to watch that. Right. Or or pull it down because you can't really edit. Well, you can. I haven't tried it. It seems that you can edit. But then how are you going to what are you going to edit in? Yeah. And yeah. It's just, oh, it's, what a, it's just a mess. And it's too bad because, you know, it 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 makes it diff, it makes it even more difficult for us to sort of promote things and and, and create more of a, a community, yeah, for right? Yeah, sure. Because I mean, and, it's it's helpful for the you know if you if you've got the show where you're reviewing people's a whole bunch of different people's music, I mean, it's helpful for them to. Well, and and I think I think that it's one of the things that's missing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like it, it. You know, it's like well, you you would know being you know having been in Montreal and Quebec that the one thing that the Quebecois on the French side have done much better than anyone is creating this star system that they have there. Yeah. And they've got a legitimate star system and it, it develops some big talent. Yeah, for sure. Right? For but sure. for a little market for what, eight, nine million people? Yeah. It's tiny, yeah, it's tiny very, market. Very, but very it, huge. It, it like punches small. way right. above its weight. Yeah. Because it has a legitimate star system that they've built up. They've got the talk shows. They've got, you know, mm. the magazines. Yeah. They've got all of this stuff. And it's produced people like, you know, it's like not my style, but Celine Dion, who was, she sold a few records. Yeah. You know, she's not had a bad career or, or they've also done it with film, you know, yeah. like, what's his name? Uh, uh, Denis Villeneuve. Uh, Denis Villeneuve, yeah. you know, and, and, and he isn't the first one. There was the guy, what was his name? Who did the um, uh, decline of the American uh, empire. Oh, which, um, which was like a big hit, a subtitled movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I can't think of his name. Is, um, is that it Xavier Dolan? Um, possibly. I'm, I'm, but, you know, and, and, and I think for me, the reason why is because they were able to create an actual, in, you know, like an ecosystem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They've, uh, they've... And, you know, and and that's part of what, what I'm at trying to aim towards in a very small way here is is that as well as to put a name to a face to talk about it and, and have a, a place where you can talk about you know music just you know musical tastes mm -hmm. what your interests are um so so i'm sure it's not going to interest anyone but the two of us but let's let's get into prog rock a little bit okay <laughs> Because, you know, having grown up in montreal <laughs> you know, one you of the like great capitals of prog oh my rock. gosh oh my god so so yeah we first moved to Montreal. So I play in a in a progressive death metal band with my okay, husband. Yeah, that's okay, how, good, good. That's yeah. how we met. Yeah. And we went to Montreal hoping to find a drummer. Right. And so we're both like really big gentle giant fans, which mm -hmm. nobody No one knows outside of Quebec. I don't nobody care. knows Gentle Giant. And we yeah. knew about them because of a friend from Quebec who had introduced yeah. them to yeah. us. And so anyway, we went, we moved to Quebec and like, we start like looking for a drummer and this girl is like, oh yeah, like I, I you know, I play drums and like, I really like Gentle Giant. And we're like, you like Gentle Giant? It was meant to be. And of course it wasn't meant to be. It was like, she was totally the wrong drummer for us. But it was so funny because like within a year we were like, oh, everybody loves Gentle Giant. They were big. They were really that 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 one the I guess their first album Gentle Giant the first one with the the sort of the, that no me no yeah name. it was a little bit like the King Crimson one I think they probably whoever did the art sort of took it a yeah, little it was, bit from the King Crimson it was, it was album good. cover uh but yeah no they were really big no one knew it's interesting I saw a documentary about them and it's like it was two or three brothers. Yeah, the three English. brothers, like a, you know, brothers. Uh, yeah, and really good musicians. Like I think they were all classically trained, like cons conservatory trained, mm -hmm. and it showed too. I mean, the musicianship yeah. was 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 out of oh, this yeah. world. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're fabulous. Yeah, no, there, there was them. What? Uh, El? Well, Ele uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> the one I've never understood. Oh, I, don't I, you, saw, but I never got into why well, maybe oh, a little bit, the you know, I saw Clive Palmer's band in Montreal yeah. mm -hmm. uh, recently and they were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, if if Clive Palmer comes through Toronto, is that where okay. you are? Yes. Yeah, I'm in Toronto. Um, yeah. If he if he comes through, go to that show. Uh, 
it's phenomenal. And he's he replaced the keyboard with this guitar player. I um and of course he's got his own stuff out. Yeah. But he's basically he's a guitar player that I guess wanted to be a pianist or something. So right. his his whole thing is like I play the guitar as if it's a piano and okay. it's just fabulous. It's Well, that it's, sounds interesting. I think the biggest reason why I didn't like the band it wasn't Lake Right, he's an okay singer. Well, he was in, uh, you know, King Crimson, I think, at one point. Yeah, he's in... like King Crimson, right? I love King Crimson, and and like like in the Court of the Crimson King, like wow, you know what I mean? What a yeah. what a pivotal record! It, it probably invented prog rock. Yeah, you know, you can make a, a good case for that. You can make an argument for sure. Yeah, uh, and drummer was really good. It was Emerson. I couldn't stand, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. You know, it, it just that, and that, that organ sound, I think it's that organ sound. <laughs> the organ not, didn't do it for I, you. Well, I just never understood it. You know what I mean? I never understood it. It was, you know, you, you know, like, yes, okay, fine. Yes, had some good records, and then they went way overboard, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. but that, that was okay. You know, King Crimson was a whole different thing. It was yeah. like the Robert Fripp freak out. Yeah. And it was, but it was always something different. And it, then- Every and album still is. was a different, and, and, and still, still is. is. Well, have <laughs> you seen like that new band that they they're, they're touring with? Now that I would go and see, <laughs> right? With the like, two or three drummers. Yeah, got, I saw in three drummers, <laughs> and it sounds like it's out of the studio and just <sighs> unbelievable. You know, like unbelievable, like some like Starless or some of these like <laughs> you know. And yeah. these aren't easy songs, no. you know what I mean? And, and and playing them live the way they do. But I think that, yeah, I think that the Taurus, so it was all three drummers who played for the band. I think yeah, it was something had... like that. I, I, mi I, I missed out on going to see it, but. Um, oh, man, yeah, that one, was... that looked like a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, holy camoli. Yeah. I and, think and it's, for... it, it sold out. I mean, it sold out in Montreal. Oh, By the time I'm like, am I, am I spending that cash? Um, yeah. And then it's like, well, yes, that would be, I'm spending that would be one... this cash because it's worth it to spend this cash. And then it's like, no, everybody else already spent that cash. Kyle, like, yeah. You got to be, you got to be on top of that kind of thing. <laughs> Unless they're coming in to do a week's worth of shows, yeah, or something yeah. like Which that. Which is what Celine Dion does when she plays. When she plays, well, Quebec, years, she, years. She Didn't does... she just two years? And or, she, I don't know. How well, she does two years in Vegas, Vegas, but like, yeah, when she plays Quebec City, it's seven nights in Quebec City, right? <laughs> Easily, you know, and she could probably. And do then they more. add five more. Yeah. 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 Well, she does it right, right? Oh, it's I've got to come back and do one more show, one yeah. more show for my fans, you know. <laughs> Yeah, my my favorite though was always uh, was was Genesis. Right, I right. was such a big well those early yeah. records, you know, uh, yeah. Nursery Crimes or that that live album. I, <laughs> I was just like I still I still really appreciate it, and it, you know, up until like I, I'm old enough that for me I was there for the whole prog rock thing, and then things started changing. It was like 76, 77, right? Because Nevermind the Bollocks came out. Right. And the Sex Pistols did that tour, <laughs> right? That was a complete disaster. But that thing was in the news every night, right? It was like right. people were truly offended by this. <laughs> and the thing is, I then immediately with some friends in high school, we formed a punk band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, wait, well, what yeah. else, right? <laughs> and... And then soon afterwards, I, I remember, like, I remember it clearly, like, just around this time, uh, London Calling came out. Mm. And that became, like, the litmus test, right? Right. <laughs> of, you know, Dinosaur all, That's Rock. another one of my favorite all-time albums. Uh, Great Rock record. Rock. But, but it was, Rock like, Rock it was Lover. I love London Calling. right? Mm. Because yeah. you have to remember, that was about, it came out at about the same time, and I can remember in high, in high school... It came around the same time that the last waltz came out. Right. Right. And that was like the, you know, the big, like the the the, the end of the 1960s. <laughs> right. You know, but it was. It yeah. was every single person who'd ever been famous at Woodstock, basically. <laughs> right. And they had their final hurrah with this. I've since come to love the 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 band. I mean, right. they, they were, they were right. really, really, but but at the time it was what they what it represented. Versus to what right. it sounded like. And that was like clearly the past. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and London Calling way to, was the way future. Way to write yourselves out. <laughs> yeah, and, and London Calling was the future. Right. 
Right. Or, or that, but that was a mainstream future. And right. then like I used to work at, well, you'd know in, in, in Montreal, I don't know, was Sam the record man still, still in operation when you oh, were yeah. there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we had, we had Sam's out here. Okay. Um, yeah, we had Sam's out, out here as well. I think, I think, I feel like Sam the record man may have held out here a little bit longer. Uh, well, they, they, yeah, they, I, I, I worked there for oh, six, seven years. Yeah. Uh, Part time throughout like CJEP, which is the last two years of high school in right. Quebec. And uh, so grade 12 and 13, and then through university and, and I think a year or so afterwards. Um, and yeah. I, I I can I can remember it. I mean, I got to listen to a lot of stuff. And what was even more interesting is, of course, the people I was working with, like the musical knowledge and the things that they knew. And what was nice, too, is that some of the people were the ones who'd recommend what we'd bring in as imports. Right. right, because Sam's Steve yeah had anything at Sam's right that was their, their really, whole thing they had every really single record how like the taste of the person that works at the local record store affects uh like what people what other people get to hear um and here in, in Newfoundland it's even it's even more profound because it's our like our entire our entire like what gets brought in what you get to hear really depends on was there one person that was into that and had the the you know the energy <laughs> and the drive to yeah. bring those things in yeah and, and and but but it was great i mean i had regular customers who would come in who would ask me to recommend records and i'd recommend mm -hmm. records for them like what was yeah. you know what was going on and I was really, I was lucky. It was that really a golden age yeah. for music because there was all kinds of stuff out uh, and there was a real excitement around it. It was pre-MTV. Right. right? Okay. So the, the record yeah. store was really was the, the place, the, to, find the place to go. It was still records, which are yeah. much more beautiful and you could, you know. They take when up you, a lot of space and they stink after a few years. Yeah, I have but, but, but the thing is that that wasn't the, <laughs> that wasn't the point of it, right? Because when you were sitting <laughs> listening to a record, you had this big, beautiful you had the piece big, of artwork big that you could look at. You could right? buy a poster. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still, it's not the same. You're not going to, you know, the poster doesn't have liner notes. It's true. It's right? true. You the could write the liner notes on the back of the poster. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, and well, then take a, it down off the wall every that's time. That's a good idea, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it probably is. You could, you could do it like like the like the headache pills, you know, like you, there's the peel back <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Well, it's not, listen, I'm sure someone tried it. Well, you well, look at the, you know, is it if 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 you had the if you had an original copy of the uh the Velvet Underground, the first record, Vel Velvet Underground and Nico, that one had a sticker. That that, that old... banana <laughs> was originally a sticker. Oh right. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey. And, and I'm sure there are very few of them left because everyone took off the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at some point in the 50s, well, it must be, God, 55 years or 56 years yeah. since it came out. You know, I, I doubt there are very many, you know, sort of beautiful versions of it left. Yeah. Um, sort of changing tack, tack a little bit. I noticed in your music... And it's interesting, you know, not not even talking, going completely away from the death metal. It's like, do that. I'd like to hear that, too. I think it could be quite fun. <laughs> but you, what was, was Joni Mitchell an influence at all? No, I, really? I was, I, which is so surprised. Like, yeah, because I, I could hear so always, like, people always bring up Joni Mitchell. Uh, I, I never listened to Joni Mitchell. Um, yeah. She just didn't uh yeah I, you know I don't, whatever it was she was never on my radar um right. it's really like uh but she's, she's she's probably the most common person that people bring up <laughs> yeah well, well i mean the like, thing i write a lot of words and i have like a lot of weird structure it's um, i think it's it's more that is that you yeah. have you've got very much of a sort of jazz jazzier Right. Sensibility yeah. in your songwriting. I I imagine that me and her listen to a lot of the same stuff. Maybe, um, Poss possibly. I mean, I listen. I would totally one of my favorite records of all time, and I've learned more from it than a lot of other ones. 
is Court and Spark. Like that is right. such a beautifully produced record. And the songwriting is so, you know what I mean? It's like one of these perfect records. Right. Court and Spark? I don't know this Court record. Court and Spark. It had uh, Free Man in Paris. Was It had okay. about five hit singles. Okay. It was one of her biggest ones. Right. Uh, and and the next one yeah. after that, it's what is it called? The something hissing of lawns. You might you might enjoy that too. Okay. Uh, uh, and you. and one thing I didn't know until I I ended up seeing a documentary about it, and this is where it gets really interesting, is she did an album called Mingus. Oh, okay. Right? I think with, I did know about with, that. with Charlie Mingus. Yeah. Right? And I had originally thought I'd never really heard it or anything like that. Uh, and I'd originally thought that it was, you know what I mean? It was her sort of tribute to him. But it turned <laughs> out that he is the one that had contacted her, <laughs> right? To cool. work with her. Very, very and, cool. And they worked together. They collaborated together. And then she put together that that band of hers. I don't know if you knew the band that she had. It was like no. Pat Metheny on guitar. <laughs> Jackal Pastorius was her, her bassist, right? <laughs> like it was a complete all-star cast of like modern yeah, jazz, like yeah. post, you know, post the old school jazz, like in the the, the modern jazz. Unbelievable band. And uh, she played with them for years. But that gives you an idea of just how much respect she had from musicians. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, um, for which sure. Which is a little bit, you know, because she, sure. she was treated quite badly by the industry. Yeah. Uh, at, at certain points. But who wasn't? Yeah. It, you yeah. Know, it's more, more the question, right? Everyone's got their... I think that's, an, their that's an important point. Um, <laughs> yeah. And especially, you know. like, people will be like, oh, like, musicians can't like sell records, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, I don't think any... I don't think there's any musician that like miss the record labels kind of thing. <laughs> I just I just wish there was a better... Well, I wish there was more focus. And I wish there was was more. I wouldn't say so much curation, but more recommendation. Yeah, that, definitely. That's no, what I'm I finding is really missing. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, because it, it's it's so not, you know, not to so say over... this way is perfect, but but like what we have now obviously has an an enormous amount of room to be a lot, an awful lot better. But it's it's just kind of funny. This kind of like you know the nostalgia for something that never was, uh, kind of. Thing yeah. that always happens. Yeah, well, but especially now though, with, with all the issues around COVID as well, where touring is almost dead, uh, the clubs are all just sort of hanging on, you know, for dear mm -hmm. life. And if you know John um Mickey is to be believed, uh, we're being screwed royally from the streaming <laughs> oh, yeah. service for the few pennies that we're yeah, making. Very very possibly yeah oh and it's just you know it's yeah and and there, there's no you know and you've got the services they seem more interested at the moment in in creating moods than yeah. actually fostering artists oh. Oh, because man, they, they got, want machines to be writing all this we got to talk about the moods uh yeah. so trying to like um you know, when you release a song and you you pitch it to playlists on on like Spotify and Amazon yeah. and, and other other there's a whole bunch of platforms for pitching and they all want to know the mood of your song. And uh, most of them don't have like you can't enter a mood. You have to pick from the moods that they have. And I like I had to pitch my stuff with zero mood chosen because I was like, you know, yeah, like, well, yeah, it's it's chill. But uh, there's some 16th note, seven, eight heavy metal drumming like so it's kind of not chill <laughs> yeah no well the, the descriptives like, aren't the descriptives aren't very know, good it's like like it's a it's uplifting but like it's not like you know it's it's yeah. positive lyrics but you know it's it's a kind of a low-key folk song so it's not like you're yeah. not going to put it on your workout mix so it's no, just exactly and and if it's if it's emotional now is it angry yeah yeah <laughs> like, you exactly. know but if that's your think, only choice i, think, I like, guess it the, has to be right <laughs> you know just like all my songs they're just all emotional <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well I, you know. some of them are multiple emotions in the same song you know so. no listen there's absolutely nothing wrong with that yeah you know yeah, I, I, I i i'm the it, it it's funny because i i've I've found sometimes a song will, it calls for it, right? It calls for an emotional 
vocal mm-hmm. performance, let's say. Mm-hmm. And and when you can get one in and nail it, it's it's great, you know. Yeah. And I, I think, but it's it's also who you know who who your influences are, right? And, oh and yeah. Most of my singing influences were all very you know sort of emotional singers. <laughs> you know, it's like Peter Gabriel wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't droning on in the background or anything. Yeah, like that, no. Right? Definitely. And there's certainly a lot of um, a bit of a, a theatrical element to yeah. a lot of prog rock in the vocals. And yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I, I mean, think, my, sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I was I was just going to say and same with like I listen to a lot of like the Celtic folk rock bands from the 60s and 70s, yeah. a, a lot of whom are still going. Yeah. Um, the same thing, like they were they were doing these ballads, they were doing these storytelling things. So it's really, you know, the vocals are uh, yeah. uh Kind of dramatic, I guess, yeah. dramatic and emotional. Yeah. Well, or Ian Anderson from, you know, Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull, yeah. Yeah. See, see, that's so, so like that Jethro was, Tull yeah. is, is like just Ian Anderson and uh, Maddie Pryor from Steel Eye Span are probably, they're my biggest vocal. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's who I grew up singing along to. Yeah. And Sandy Denny, like Fairport yeah. Convention. Now, well. now with, with Jethro Tull, did you like the later, more folky stuff or the earlier, more rocky stuff or both? Uh, I loved all of the '70s stuff. Uh, like I loved, I loved Heavy Horses and Songs from the Wood, and I loved Aqualung and um, oh, the first, the Stand Up and um, Thick as oh, a Brick. Yeah. Th- well, I love Thick as a Brick. Yeah. Um, no, the first. What is the first album called? Why is that escaping me? Uh, uh, it's got. Um, hang on, this is going to drive me nuts. So I'm going yeah. to. But what wasn't wasn't the first Aqualung? No. God, that's like their fourth or fifth album. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that did. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you correct me, please. Um, benefit, benefit. benefit Actually, okay. I guess Aqualung is like their second album. Must or be their third second, album. Because Thick as a Brick was the third one. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. Stand I know. Up. Aqualung was the breakthrough. Aqualung right? was the breakthrough. Stand up, benefit, and then Aqualung. So benefit is um was probably my favorite. Okay. Uh, album growing up uh yeah but yeah i i loved and i actually have all those on vinyl on vinyl um, like i those are the records i kept so i've i've got i've i don't listen to them on vinyl because they stink <laughs> well i mean you know, walk into a on to that subject i mean in canada we had terrible pressings You're, Oh, I mean, like they they stink. Like I can't. Oh, the records stink. Oh, that, oh, you mean the in the you, room with the records? Like oh, they okay. they <laughs> they were just never stored properly. Is what you're saying? Um, they, no, they were, like they were in a damp, into, damp and if you dusty. Walk into a record store, like all you smell is that like rotting paper and and mildew. Yeah, so. but that, I I you know that's a, a smell I always loved. I mean, listen, yeah, I know. <laughs> one of my one of my favorite records. <laughs> I ended up getting it because, you know, like you, when I was a kid, I was always in record stores. I was like attracted right. to them like a moth yeah. or light, right? And one time I was go uh, home visiting uh, to Moncton after we moved to Montreal. And there was this little used record store uh, around the corner from where we were staying. So I made a beeline to it at like nine, ten o'clock in the morning, just when it opened. The owner had to jump out, I think, to get a coffee or whatever. So he left me in charge of the store (laughs) and said that I could choose an album for the work, right? Right. Nice. And the album that I chose, I I really wish I still had it because it was the original Gatefold, was Roxy Music. Oh, nice. Roxy Music, the white one. Nice. The very Very famous uh, 70s model. Yeah. Uh, I I, I like Roxy Music, too. (laughs) And that record blew my mind. Yeah. You know, I became yeah, like right. such a massive fan of the band, but also Brian Eno, who was in the band. Yeah. Right. Who yeah. I'd never, never heard of. And it was such a, for me too, it was like one of those ones where it's sort of the end. For me, it was the end of my interest in prog rock. Right. And the beginnings of my interest in what was to then become like, post-punk new wave da 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 because yeah. they're, they're clearly the you know what i mean that that not before that thing. existed right yeah uh a band out of time is the way i would put them because right. they're really there's no there was nothing like them before and very little like them since since yeah you know do you like do you like gowan 
do you like Lawrence Gowan? I, I love Gowan. <laughs> it's just that kind of um, that kind of. No, no, I I I'm familiar with it when he was yeah. having his hits. Like that's when I was working yeah. in the record store. It was he it was it, it's okay, you know. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it was never. I never got into that Toronto sound. Okay. You know what I mean? It, it never. I was always. I guess it was a Montreal thing too. <laughs> Oh, he's so beloved in Montreal, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but not not in my he's you know what I mean. Time. No, right. I mean, I, listen, he was better than like uh, what was his name, Corey Hart. Okay, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and he was definitely the best of all of all of, of that of those, outside yeah. of, of course, Rush, that then became the big, yeah became I, what I, they I, became, I love, right? I love Rush. <laughs> but out of that whole sort of Toronto scene, right? Um, yeah. yeah, he was. I mean, I don't, you know. What was this big big hit? Uh, Strange Animal. A strange right. Animal, which that's like uh, like that's probably my the, my first memory of like yeah. much music and falling in love with the video is the Strange Animal video. Yeah. Um, but that whole I listen to that album all the time. Yeah, no, it's it's it, you know it's not, it wasn't still, a bad. I saw him live a couple of years ago and he was fantastic too. Yeah, it wasn't a bad album, but I think for me it was a little bit. I guess I was too snooty because right. it was all the English stuff that I was right. all into at that time, right? <laughs> So it was very much, you know, it was Joy Division, the, then we gave New Order and, you know, right, all, more right. of that, you know, the Cure, yeah. Early Cure. Right. And we were lucky because in Montreal, we had the spectrum and every act, like Went all through. of those sort of early 80s acts all came through Montreal. Okay. Like they they do Montreal, sometimes Toronto, New York, Los Angeles. Yeah. And Montreal was like always the first show. So you got them fresh before they, you know, had any yeah. real issues yeah. with the band or whatever. They <laughs> usually make great each other. performances. <laughs> yeah. They weren't all tired out or partied out or whatever. Yeah. And we saw all of them like, you know, Simple Minds. Right. Yeah. They were a great band back in the day or uh, OMD. I don't uh, know OMD at all. Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. They're worth checking out. I mean, yeah. you might like them uh, because, no, they were very, uh, they were sort of early, an early sort of electronic band. Okay. But they were very orchestral. Like right they, they went that yeah. way. So they were very sort of, pro. they were more proggy. They were a little more proggy, right on. Than, than other, and, and they were, they were quite talented, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the wonderful thing about Montreal. Like, so like Newfoundland, like bands do not tour here. Um, mm, so I've yeah. never seen a touring. Like, we've Trooper and April Wine come through uh, yeah. all the time, and they're awesome to see. April live. Wine is great. Yeah, like, and and uh, yeah, I mean they're fantastic. And uh, but that's it. Like that's that's who comes through. Um, and so I ended up in Montreal because I hitchhiked up to see a show, and then I saw the show posters, and it was just like, what the hell, like. Like it did, had never really occurred to me that any of these bands like actually play shows or that they actually played shows in Canada. Like it's, it's like, you know, they play shows in Europe or whatever. Um, and it like my 13 years in Montreal were like, I went to concerts constantly. I was always blown away by who was. Yeah. And, and, and Montreal isn't even the city with the best, best scene. That was Toronto. Like Toronto for venues is even even now and even through COVID. I've got one oh, yeah. friend who's very into jazz and not for not for metal though. Like uh, you know, it's, it's no, hard to say, I've, no. I've been you yeah. look at the rosters like they there's lots of bands they don't even hit Toronto or they they hit okay. Toronto but I've never enjoyed being at a metal show in Toronto. Okay, well that that's fair. I, I, I never went to metal shows in metal. Toronto either. And, and um, like and like the um the uh, the yeah, like there's so many more venues for metal in Montreal. And like they can, there's like small towns will have metal bands touring from Europe in, in Quebec. So it's okay. It's, well, that's, that's and Montreal is a heavy metal paradise. So I think, I think other genres definitely, Toronto is the place to be. Yeah. For, for well, I, I'm thinking more back during. And my, yeah, maybe at, at the time too. At, at the time. And also yeah. it was when I was more active in bands. Right. So, so once you'd established yourself a little, a little bit, there were more venues to actually play. Play at sure. because Montreal at that time had Didn't really, you know, there there was the spectrum for bigger bands right. and two or three other venues maybe, and right. one of them was Concor was the you know the the the, the pub at Concordia <laughs> sort of thing, and so there there wasn't a whole you know. 
Right. Or, yeah. Or, or it was, it you know, changed. little weird venues or or unofficial, you know, sort of semi legal venues or, or right. stuff like that or, or parties, you know, that people had sort of pre rave. They'd put on right. parties and stuff. Whereas Toronto, there were were a lot they had of all those things. Yeah. A lot of sort of three four hundred capacity places, right? Where you'd mm. get bigger bands in and right. stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, mm. yeah. There's just so many of these things and so many, you know, so many stories. I'm just trying to think, um, is there, there anything I missed? Uh, anything you, anything else you want to talk about? No, I think, I think the, the main, the main, we were going to mention the single and mention the album and, and uh, have a chat about music. I think that's, that's what we talked about doing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm just, uh, yeah. you, you got, you got any questions for me? Do I have any questions for you? Um, what do you do? What like what type of what type of stuff are you writing? Oh, oh god, well, yeah, um, all kinds of different stuff. All kinds of I things. as I explained, I'm I'm working with a guitarist on my latest album. Uh and I, I brought him in because it was one song that I I I wrote space for a single, as a single for a solo. Right. And I don't play an instrument, so solos are always, it's an adventure yeah, when I want... try to write them myself, right? I have to get really creative. Uh, and I'd, really I'd cool played, I, and I'd, I'd had uh, John John uh, Mickey come in, and he's played on a few of my tracks. Cool. And I, I had asked him again, and he said, oh, you know what, I, I just don't want to collaborate with people. And that's like respect, you know. Yeah. So he suggested that I talk to Bob. Uh, and so I did. And, you know, the, the song is going to be the first single from from my next record. It's also it's a COVID song. It's called uh, Paper Mask. And um, it worked out really well. And we, we, we work well together because I, I find generally like with with guitarists or whatever, I'll just give the song, say, play your stuff. Send me your tracks. Give me yeah. one. Give me a track how you want it to sound. So run it through whatever gear you want to run it through, and just a basic one with nothing on it, and just send me tracks, and I'll and I'll You'll do what, I'll do whatever I want with them. Yeah, <laughs> sort of thing, right? And you know, and and here's the part where there's a solo. So go wild, you know, <laughs> and you know I'll get back two, three, five, ten guitar tracks, and then I'll sit down and I'll start playing around with them and and because my with my stuff a lot of it is because I don't play any instruments I started off using this one program and basically editing tape because what what I what I do is I'd play stuff in live and then okay. edit it down and repeat it and use it and you know sometimes I'd I'd play I'd noodle around for you know 3 minutes and save five seconds right and there was five right. seconds that i heard that you know it's yeah. like, oh there's something wow what's that and i'd build around that <laughs> oh, I, 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 you know and yeah. style wise i guess Which it's is... interesting because as i'm 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 getting feedback from more people i guess i i guess i wear my my influences on my sleeve more than i thought <laughs> and so i guess the best way is uh it's sort of bowie Nice. Uh, Eno, more of the pop stuff, so his early pop records, and and sort of Roxy music. Okay. It's like I'm all over the place, but it's all sort of rock. Right. Some of the stuff is more electronic, mattering on how I'm producing. Like if I'm using one method, it's more electronic sounds and more beat, you know. Right. But th but that's partly just the way I'm making yes. music. But I've also got totally into doing stuff with MIDI. Cool. And uh, the MIDI stuff, I'm more, my idea is to uh, become a rock band, although oh, okay. I don't play anything. So right. I'll, I'll program all the instruments. And there's so many great, like, the amount yes. of fantastic free and almost free plugins and things is just, it boggles the mind. Yeah. Like, so, you know, like the native instrument stuff is just... Anyway, uh, so I, I play around a lot with that. Cool. And, and I think that I'm more of my strengths are more, well, I sing, obviously. I was a singer in all kinds of bands. 
Uh, but my strengths, I think, are more like arrangement and composition. Good. Those are those are good strengths to and, have. Yeah, and and I I, I really love those, arranging. Those I are... love arranging. You know what nice. I mean? And I, you nice. know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and yeah. trying to come up, you know, it's like these are, you always run into problems. <laughs> and the thing is, though, is like what I've learned, and it's really my philosophy with making music is like you look for the lemons because that's where the lemonade is. Right. right? <laughs> and without lemons, there's no lemonade. So like it's the mistakes or the like the part in the song where it's like, oh, this is getting boring. I got to change something up. Right. And then yeah. the question and is, you, how do you change it up? Or the, 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 my stuff is becoming, it's really weird. I'm not into jazz, but my stuff is becoming weirdly jazzier. <laughs> <laughs> like there's all these time well, I mean, changes. Well, and every, every, all of your influences love jazz. So <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, you know, and what, what, what's interesting is like, these it's like, it's the time changes and, oh, and yeah. stops and, and that kind of thing. And, and yeah. finding like having a bridge, like, yeah. you know, the song, there's gotta be a bridge. There's gotta be at least three or four different parts. Yeah. You know, and half the time it's just like completely they're the noodles or the little, like, you know, like I'll do something and because I can pick out, a few chords and I'll, I'll generally like I'll start by doing a chord progression that right. sounds interesting to me and then I know it'll be in key because it's sort of I mean I'm in yeah. key when I'm doing it you know so uh so it's not gonna but it, uh, it's all by ear because I really I've tried learning instruments and I'm I'm just I guess I'm just too lazy or I'm you know it's too old if I if <laughs> I'd been a kid I probably would have you know would have been beaten into me but <laughs> unfortunately I'm, I'm I'm getting too old for that uh but yeah no you should you ch ch check some of it out and then yeah. we can talk offline because there's one song you know I i'd love to have you i i think it's going to matter like i i made a big mistake and i ended up erasing all of the master tracks from my last oh, record no. yeah but oh, you know no. but you know what it's like I'd, I'd already been i was mastering at the time so i have working masters for a lot of the stuff. Some of the stuff I've been able to find and reconstruct. Right. And so I can do additive. Right. For you some can. of the songs. So that's fine because they were at the point. It's just, I want little things anyway. And, you know, I can work, I can work around it. Right. No one but me is going to know, you know? Right. Right. Uh, but there are others where I'm sort of debating. Do I just start again from scratch? Because I like the song. Uh, but you know, there's parts I I'd like to change and I'd really like to change and there's no way I can do it in the editing. I can't do it in post. Right. Right. Cause I right. can't pull out that one sound or, you know, or, or make a big arrangement change. So with some of them, what I'm almost thinking of doing is sort of the songs there, there's a clear idea of it. It's sort of like fine musicians to play the parts and then build the song around. Right. That. And that's sort of exciting. You know what I mean? It's sort of like, oh, there's wow, it's a new way of working, right? Yeah, for and sure. And that's what I mean. That's what I mean with the, the lemonade part is you've got to you've got to take you've got to you've got to lean into the mistakes, is I guess the best part. I, <laughs> I found that that's always what works it's, out the best. For sure. For sure. You know, sure. that that's where the real gold is. Yeah. Uh rather than just sitting back and having everything <laughs> everything work too easily. Yeah, for sure. No, the, oftentimes the, it's just like you listen to it and it's like, yeah, okay, that's nice. Thank yes. you. You know, but it's not the stuff that you're humming mm -hmm. or, or the, you know, the, the, the sort of earworm that, that you can't get out of your mind. That's right. I mean, that's when I know when I've hit something is when I, when I start singing along to a song three or yeah, four it's days later. Yeah, it's like it's days and we're like, like, okay, okay, we're going oh, with this one. Yeah. It happened with other people too. This is yeah, a good sign. Sure. But uh, yeah, I guess it's, a, it's as a musician, I'm more, uh, I'm a fan of music. Yeah, you know? I'm same, same here. I'm, I'm as, like sometimes you hear like big musicians be like, oh, I don't listen to music anymore. It's like, it's going to hurt my creativity and it's like you're not going to do anything creative if you aren't a yeah. fan and listening to as many different things as possible yeah no I'm, I'm i'm so glad i i had a chance to listen to so much during a period where there was so much different stuff going on yeah. yeah uh and and so many actual 
talented musicians because i mean there's a lot of talented musicians here you know these days but there's just the the barriers are so low yeah and which the is record great. companies are so um <laughs> anyway they've always been evil but they they, yeah. they they seem to be they found a whole new way to be evil these days. <laughs> You know, up there, and, and I really feel I really listen. I really feel sorry though for some of the kids who get taken in by it. Oh know? yeah, and, and they're there just to basically be you know Millie Vanillies, right? Right. You know, right. And, and they don't make any money at the end, any because any of the success is all they don't own exactly. any of it. You know, they're all basically it's all leased stuff. You know, right. And they get discarded. They have their hit. They're no longer the flavor of the week. And, you know, you're gone. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the way the record. Well, yeah, no, I, I know. But but, but at least some of them, way. they had, you know, they went on to have great careers, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, because there was a basis for it. Or they, they were lucky enough to be in an era where they're out, you know, yeah. you know, like the, the I mean, people I mean, in somewhere. Hamburg, you know, they're in Hamburg for a year or whatever. And they're playing 12 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they get, you're they gonna got, get better. They used to have some time to hone their hone their skills. Yeah, and, and it's noticeable. Like they came back and they were the big thing. Yeah. Right? Why were they the big thing? Well, they could nail it in the studio in one take because they were playing for twelve hours, right? Yeah, indeed. And they had this massive library of stuff that they'd learned. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, and you look at all of those bands; they were like that, right? You know, mm. but anyway, anyway, indeed. I will let you get back to your. Yeah. I, I have to I have to do life. another stream now in five minutes. Oh well, well, you should have told me we could have we could have cut it cut it earlier. We could have just gone right in. Yeah, or, or just you, you give them the give them the stream and they could come and join us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll no, no, it's my stream. It's oh, my your stream. Tr your stream. Okay, well, yeah, you, well, then you send me the link. <laughs> anyway, it was a pleasure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll we'll have absolutely. to do it we'll do it again, and I'll be I'll be uh, in touch about uh, about doing some sort of collaboration. Perfect. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. If, if anyway. you've got a song and you're like, I want guitar like that. No, I'm... no, I've got I've I've got a song. I you know it's got all kinds of stops and weird chord structures and stuff like that. It's like right down your alley, and you could fix it up and and correct all the mistakes <laughs> I made, not knowing it was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway Perfect. thank you so much all right thank you uh, and i'll i'll also i'll tell uh, yeah i'll we'll work out the details so all your stuff's down in the description when this comes okay. out and uh and i'll tell you when i'm you know the release date when is and we can see if we're going to do i think with with john we both said we're going to be in the chat when the thing gets premiered okay so cool if you want to do something like that we can probably yeah i'm i'm up for that figure it out if you you know just yeah, in case, I mean, if fun. it's nothing, it'll just be the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Chat away. <But> anyway, <laughs> exactly. You take you take care. All right, you it was too. A real pleasure, and we'll talk Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. Bye bye. bye, -bye.